Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I don't claim that my builds are the best in the game, and I'm sure there are better ways to optimize some of them, but be aware that I do tend to get my builds at least endgame viable. This includes things like arbitration, steel path, idle on hunts, etc. Now that this is out of the way, these timestamps have been left here and in the description for your convenience. Feel free to skip around, but I'll start with the basics first just in case people don't know how to play this frame. Before getting into the stats, it is worth mentioning that there are going to be minor spoilers for the sacrifice quest. If you don't care, keep going. If you do, turn back now. And now that that is taken care of, I will be covering all the stats for the different variations of Excal. Keep in mind, if you have Excalibur Prime, just use him instead of Umbra, unless for whatever reason you uh, use him to fight Sentience. Prime and Umbra have the same stats, but Umbra has a disadvantage that I'll get into when I go over the passive. So... Armor is 300 for Umbra and 225 for regular. So you're looking at a 75 point increase to uh, Umbra in terms of damage reduction. This is 50% and 42.8% respectively. For energy, you're looking at 150 for Umbra, 100 for regular. A 50 point increase puts you at 225 and 150 at max respectively. For health and shield, you're looking at a base 100 for both. This puts you at 300 at max. For sprint speed, you're also looking at a stock 1.0 for each. Overall, he's pretty stock, except for his armor, which is pretty high. Being at such a high armor gives him an advantage since he is melee focused. In terms of acquisition, regular Excalibur is a starter frame, but alternatively, he can be acquired from Lieutenant Lacrill on Mars. Excalibur Umbra is rewarded for completing the sacrifice quest, while Prime is only obtainable if you were a founder who purchased a pack for $50 or more between 2012 and 2013. Moving on to abilities, we're going to start with the passive, so Umbra exhibits sentience in combat without transference control. Attacks 10% faster and deals 10% more damage while wielding swords, so not including the Umbra sentience, Excal hits a bit faster and harder with sword style weapons, so this can be Nakanas, dual swords, rapiers, and so on. For the Umbra sentience, I actually consider this to be an issue more than a buff, like it's cool in terms of story and stuff, but in practice it tends to cause problems. Basically what happens is when you go into Operator is he controls himself, uh, which is cool and stuff, except for the fact that if I have a buff on myself, as soon as I switch and go back into Excalibur, it's gone. So definitely keep that in mind if you have to do a lot of switching in and out of the Operator to get use out of things like Magus Elevate. Moving on to Slash Dash, his first ability, dash between enemies while slashing with Exalted Blade. So in a cone in front of you, enemies are marked to be hit by Slash Dash, and Excalibur will go to one by one within that range. So each attack raises the combo counter and damage scales from ability strength, damage mods on your melee, combo counter, and even his passive. If the target survives the hit, they are guaranteed to be knocked down, which is really nice. Excalibur is also immune while casting, and it can be used regardless of if there is an enemy to target. So this means it can actually be used as a pretty quick means to get around if you have range. Not the most practical use, but it's there. I really don't hit this ability much aside from that. Moving on to his second ability, Radial Howl or Radial Blind, depending on who you're playing. It does pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this version of the ability for Umbra clears uh, sentient resistances. So, let out a ferocious howl that stuns nearby enemies that causes sentience to shut up any build resistances, like I mentioned. Uh, this ability is pretty basic. It's affected by range and duration, and it gives a nice blind so enemies stop shooting. It opens enemies up to finishers, and even gives bonus damage for melee attacks since they are now considered stealth attacks. Unfortunately, the ability doesn't work through obstacles in the environment. That's pretty much all there is to this ability, but it is pretty solid. This ability is the ability that can be put on other frames when Excalibur is subsumed. Moving on to Excalibur's third ability, Radial Javelin. Launches javelins towards enemies, dealing high damage and impaling them to walls. So it's affected by ability strength and range, and you cannot exceed 12 javelins. It's a pretty limiting ability, but this thing hits like a truck when you're starting out new. If you find yourself surrounded, it will absolutely delete surrounding enemies, giving you some breathing room. So basically, javelins get sent out dealing damage to enemies, and even stuns them for a small duration if they didn't die. It requires line of sight, just like Radial Blind. Moving on to his fourth ability, Exalted Blade. Summons a sword of pure light and immense power. So basically, you hit this when all else fails. If you want something to just die, this is the go-to. It's a channeled ability, which means it drains energy over time as it's being used. And the fact that it's an exalted weapon means it has its own mods. There are two types of attacks. There is the damage of the blade itself. Then there is the spectral blade that gets launched forward. 
The blade itself generates combo while the wave of the attack does not. So because it generates two different attacks in one, you can actually get two hits from the same attack at close range, which is pretty solid. The wave has unlimited punch through, but is still affected by the default range, so even though it will pass through an unlimited amount of walls, it can still only go so far. Enemies hit by the wave will take a stagger effect as well, giving him a bit more crowd control integrated into the damage. Just like regular melee, exalted weapons have their own stance, so for the stance on exalted blade, you have your regular or not moving attack, which causes a guaranteed knockdown at the end. Then you have your moving combo, which is your typical spam. Moving while blocking and attacking is another basic one, but has a slight uh, momentum lunge forward on the first attack. Slide attack is an interesting one. It doesn't do too much damage, but causes a mini radial blind, which goes off of range and duration, as seen in the abilities page. The slams have the basic attributes for a slam attack. The regular heavy attack, as well as the slam heavy attack, temporarily suspends enemies in the air. In order to maximize this ability, you'll want to mod for strength to get more damage, range if you plan to use it for the built-in blind, which I can't really recommend. You'll also want duration to increase the stun as well as bring down the cost per second a bit, efficiency to bring down the initial cast cost and the overall drain per second down as well. Moving on to ability augments, starting with his first one, Surging Dash, Slash Dash Augment. Each enemy hit during Slash Dash further increases your melee counter by 4. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, strength affects the, the base 4 uh, extra combo. And if I just pull out my melee and hit some dudes, as you can see, it goes up pretty quick compared to the original one that it goes up, goes up by 5. Moving on to his second augment, Radiant Finish, Radial Blind Augment. Blinded enemies take 300% more finisher damage. This augment's bonus damage is affected by strength, so of course if I were to do a finisher on an enemy that is blinded, it gives me more damage. It's not great by itself for Excalibur in my opinion, but it is here. One mod I'm not going to be covering is Signal Flare, which is also a Radial Blind uh, augment, as it's exclusive to Conclave. Next one is Furious Javelin, Radial Javelin Augment. Each enemy hit will increase Excalibur's melee damage by 10% for 16 seconds. Damage is affected by strength, while duration is of course affected by duration. The mod itself isn't the worst, I just have a hard time making it fit, but it does boost things like Exalted Blade. Moving on to Chromatic Blade Augment, Exalted Blade Augment. Exalted Blade's damage type changes depending on Excalibur's emissive color and status chance is increased by 300%. So for emissive, the color generally follows what you'd expect. Yellow, orange, and red is fire, blue is electric, green is toxin, and so on and so forth. The status is increased by having more strength, and this puts Exalted Blade from a 15% status to a 60% status just by having this equipped. So it's definitely really, really good. This thing seriously ramps up Exalted Blade's damage by a ton. At this point in the video, I like to answer the question, is this frame still path viable? Can it run arbitrations as a part of the Eidolon hunt? Probably not great for Eidolons. I mean, he can do them just like every other frame in this game. Uh, it's just, why would you? Uh, but Excalibur is a great starter and can very easily destroy high-level targets with his Exalted Blade and provide enough crowd control with his second ability to not get absolutely destroyed by everything. He also has a pretty good base armor, which contributes to survivability a lot. So I would say he is great for endgame content. Before we get into the builds, it's worth mentioning I won't be covering a new player build for regular Excalibur because frankly it's not worth investing a bunch in him since you get better versions later with everything you need. Not to mention initial investments would be better put towards a Rhino early on. Moving on to builds, so for the first build we have a Rage Frame build, so this build is designed to be super tanky while also having a really good amount of crowd control and healing and it also dishes out enough damage to do really well in Steel Path. In terms of Helminth, you're going to want Gloom. Gloom will heal you as you do damage and slow down enemies around you. It provides great crowd control and healing. I would say you should definitely use this over other things, but other options work as well. Good options being things like Roar and Eclipse for bonus damage. You could also use something like Reeve for healing, but it's not entirely needed as I have other fixes for healing. There's plenty of options, so be creative if you want, but my build revolves around Gloom or damage buffs. In terms of format, you're looking at one form of Umbra. I just added a Nariman for Prime Flow. So moving on to the mods, we're starting with the Aura. We have Steel Charge. So the Aura can be other things. Corrosive Projection is not more damage unless you have multiple people running it uh, compared to Steel Charge. You could do something like Growing Power here as well if you didn't want to invest in another forma. And the way that would work is you would just get the proc, then activate your fourth. I prefer Steel Charge, especially in public or solo runs. 
Uh, with coordinated groups, I would say corrosive protection on everyone is a pretty good alternative. Of course, uh, you'll have trouble fitting it in this build without adding another forma, so I can give you alternatives if you don't feel like adding a forma, and I'll go into those shortly. So for the first three mods, uh, no brainer, it's Umbra. We're having all the Umbra mods on him fully maxed because it just gives us so much health, so much strength, and a ton of armor. Going on to the next mod, uh, I would say Prime Flow is pretty good here. We're pairing this with Hunter Adrenaline for our upkeep. It's pretty strong. Next one is Prime Continuity. This is just to bring down the overall drain on Exalted Blade, as well as giving you some more time to stun things with Radial Howl. For the next mod, we have Chromatic Blade. This is just a no-brainer. This is so much extra damage that you'd be a fool not to run this. Next one is Hunter Adrenaline. Uh, you'll need to replace this with Rage if you uh, are running something else on your aura and you don't want to form another slot just to make everything fit. Adaptation is the next one. This gives us so much extra more tankiness and I have it 8 out of 10 just to make it fit. The reason why I do this is because it's it pretty much, once you're at a full stack, it gives you the same benefit. The only difference is um, you have 18 seconds versus 20. For the Exilus, we have Power Drift. Uh, so for this, you'll need it to be 4 out of 5 if you aren't using Steel Charge to make everything fit. Of course, assuming you don't want to add another Forma, uh, but I'm using it maxed on this one because I'm using Steel Charge. So if all that was confusing, basically this is what your build would look like if you were running something else like Growing Power. In terms of Arcanes, we're running Fury and Strike Fury to buff our damage uh, on melees whenever we get a critical hit, which we'll be getting plenty and strike to increase our uh, attack speed with melee uh, just, you know, occasionally whenever we get a hit. This is pretty much almost always up. Basically, we run these just so we don't have to run mods to bring up our damage and speed. Uh, we already have enough tankiness and healing, so boosting our melee output is more desirable than running something like uh, Grace or whatever. Moving on to miscellaneous requirements. Uh, obviously, Exalted Umber Blade is here. And keep in mind, my emissive is also red. Uh, for the extra heat damage. But going back into the blade, it's a four form of build, so you'll add two Matarai, a Naraman, and a Vazarin. I prefer a Corrosive and Blast build, but you can run whatever as your second status that fits. If you don't have Gloom, uh, replace Northwind with Healing Return, so you can still have some form of healing. It's lower damage, but this is a trade-off for not having Gloom. Just make sure your mods are in this order in order to get the proper status types. In terms of other things, I mean, I run Death Cube just for an energy generator, uh, so whenever he assists in so many kills, I get extra energy. It helps with sustain a little bit. It's not totally necessary, but that's what I do. Because I use Synth Fiber and other armor mods, and, and I heal my Sentinel from Gloom, he almost never dies. In terms of Operator School, you're going to want to use Nariman, and the reason why we do this is because of Power Spike. You want to keep your combo multiplier up with as little utility as possible, so of course this is a very good option to sustain that. So let's go into a bit of gameplay. So basically how you use it is you just get in, and you press Gloom, or your damage buff, or whatever you're using, and you just start meleeing everything to death. At first, I don't use Exalted Blade just so I can generate a bit of energy, so I know I'll have enough to sustain it. And then once I have enough, I basically just get right into it and start killing everything. So as you can see, it does plenty of damage, and I'm not even at a full combo yet, and I'm super tanky, and that's pretty much all there is to it. You just press your melee button for the rest of the mission, repeatedly, until it breaks. Occasionally you want to mix in a radial howl so you do extra damage. Uh, you'll see that I also do it with the boss up ahead. I get knocked down in the beginning, and then I dodge away from him, but as you can see, it does plenty of damage. It's just I was being me. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So that is the complete Excalibur guide. Excalibur is a super good starter and even does well in higher level content. If you enjoyed the video or it helped in any way, please leave a like. And if you're looking forward to future content like this, subscribe and stay tuned. If I missed anything or you'd like to leave some feedback, leave it down in the comments. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.